This conference will now be recorded. Uh, hello and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, Today is our learning outcome uh, two and uh, my name is Yasser Galfraz and I'm your tutor for today's session which is understanding strategy strategic capacity planning for products and services so can you see my screen and uh, can you hear me any issue yes. okay so uh, today we will start with uh, uh, what is capacity planning and uh, uh, why is capacity planning is important so capacity planning is uh, basically the process of uh, uh, determining the production capacity required by an organization to meet the uh, changing uh, demands for its products. In simpler terms, it is about figuring out how much a company needs to produce and satisfy customer needs. Uh, why is capacity planning is important? Uh, there are several reasons. Uh, to consider first of all capacity planning helps control the rate of output uh, for your business by understanding the capacity needed to meet demand you can ensure that you are not uh, over producing or under producing thus optimizing efficiency uh, the second thing is uh, uh, Capacity planning tools assist in determining operating cost, supply and demand dynamics, uh, and even future investment decisions for uh, business. By having a clear understanding of uh, uh, your business, by having uh, of clear understanding of your capacity requirement, you can make informed decision about resources, allocation, expansion, plans and potential area of improvement. So uh, next is what is the ultimate goal of project manager? So a uh, primary objective of project manager is to uh, successfully deliver their projects. In order to achieve the goals, project manager must effectively plan, organize and coordinate various resources and activities. Uh, so uh, concept of capacity planning, which is often associated with supply and demand in product based industries. Uh, however, it is uh, important to note that capacity planning is equally applicable to service industries and play a, a critical role in project management. So at uh, project level capacity planning revolves around assessing uh, whether there are sufficient resources uh available to complete a given project to calculate your team's capacity you need to consider two key factors their availability and their current workload uh, availability refers to the amount of time and uh, uh, effort team members can dedicate to the project so this takes into account their existing uh, commitments such as other projects or responsibilities uh, within the organizations uh, by understanding their availability project managers uh, can allocate resources effectively and ensure that the project requirements are met so uh, the second thing is uh, current workload involves assessing the uh, task responsibility and responsibilities team members are uh, already engaged in. So by considering both availability and workload, project managers can make informed decisions about resource allocation, ensuring that the uh, right people are assigned to the right task uh, at the right time. So this help uh, optimize productivity, minimize uh, uh, and enhance the uh, chance of project success. Uh, what is the uh, difference between capacity planning and resource planning? So here we will discussing the uh, distinction between capacity planning and resource planning. 
So capacity planning requires you to make sure you have sufficient resources to deliver your project as such as contains an element of prediction. And resource planning is more about coordinating the workforce in real time. You are assigning people to project while monitoring resource utilizing. Uh, capacity planning involves uh, uh, evaluating and forecasting the resources needed to successfully execute a project or uh, meet operational demands. Uh, it, it focus on uh, determining whether the available resources such as manpower, equipment, and infrastructures are sufficient to handle the workload. Capacity planning requires a, a predictive element is it involves estimating future requirements based on uh, historical data, growth projections, and other relevant factors. Uh, in, other, uh, in other hand, uh, resource planning is more concerned with the real-time coordination of the uh, workforce. It involves the allocation of individuals of specific projects or tasks while closely monitoring resource uh, utilizations. Uh, resource planning resolve around managing the uh, available pool of human resource efficiently ensuring that they are optimally assigned to project based on their skills, expertise and availability. So it requires constant monitoring and uh, adjustment to ensure that resources are allocated effectively as project requirements evolve. Uh, can you see my screen and uh, hear me as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, critically assess the importance of capacity planning. So capacity planning is a, a fundamental uh, aspect of business management that enables company to determine whether they have the uh, necessary resources and capabilities to meet uh, current and future demands. It plays a crucial role in ensuring operational efficiency and successful project uh, completion so first and uh, first and uh, foremost capacity planning allows you to assess your company uh, ability to handle the workload by understanding the uh, time it takes for your employees to perform specific tasks you gain insight in the, into overall capacity of your uh, workforce uh, for service-based business, it is essential to consider the uh, number of projects each employee can handle us maintaining res reasonable timelines for service completion. So this knowledge helps you determine if your organization can take on additional projects uh, uh, without overburdening your employees or uh, compromising the quality of uh, deliverables. Uh, also, capacity uh, planning also provide valuable insight for making informed decisions regarding business expansions by understanding the typical time frames required for various tasks. So you can evaluate whether your current capacity uh, can support an increase in work volume or if expansion is necessary. So this assessment is uh, crucial when considering the potential to serve more clients or produce a higher number of items. Uh, proper capacity planning empowers you to gauge the uh, feasibility and cost effectiveness of uh, silent up your operations. Uh, consider employee skills. Uh, next one. Uh, some employees are better at certain tasks with than a team. Make sure your team uh, captains are good at identifying those skills and employ these skills when completing a project. In a marketing project, you want to designers producing eye-catching graphics and the writers providing snappy slogans. So uh, example of uh, marketing project in uh, this scenario it is essential to 
uh, capitalize on the uh, diverse skill within the team. Designers who process a keen eye for uh, aesthetics should focus on creating eye-catching graphics. So that that will uh, captive uh, captivate the audience. On the other hand, writers should be responsible for uh, crafting snappy and attention-grabbing slogans that uh, effectively convey the brand's message uh, by leveraging the skills of each team member so the marketing project can truly flourish uh, similarly uh, in a production environment it is uh, crucial to have employees who are uh, adequately uh, adequately trained and process the necessary skills for their specific roles uh, consider a retail setting for instance the employee who excels at swiftly uh, stocking shelves may not necessarily process the same proficiency when it comes to operating the cash register and vice versa. Uh, by, recon by recognizing these uh, distinctions, team leaders can optimize efficiency by assigning uh, tasks to the most suitable employees. So this not only uh, enhance productivity, but also ensure a positive customer experience. Calculate uh, accurate workload. Determine kind uh, of uh, workload your team can handle once you have assessed everyone's strength and weaknesses. So consider how long it takes the team to handle each process. So uh, basically uh, he's talking about assessing strength and weaknesses. Each team member process unique skills and abilities. Uh, that contribute the overall productivity of the team by understanding these strengths and weaknesses. Uh, uh, we can assign tasks more effectively, ensuring that everyone is working on uh, activities. Anyone is the okay? So, yes. Sorry. Uh, Ensuring that everyone is working on uh, activities that align with their capabilities. This not only increases efficiency, but also boosts morale within the uh, team. Oh, sorry. Uh, however, it is important to uh, remember that task that requires intense efforts and quick turnaround time cannot be sustained on a regular basis. Uh, such product can lead to uh, burnout, the decreased productivity. So, therefore, it is crucial to strike a balance between challenging assignments and manageable workloads uh, to maintain the well being and motivations of your team members. Uh, Let's discuss long-term projects when considering taking on a new client, developing new products or expanding current services. It is vital to evaluate your firm's capacity to successfully execute these initiatives, assess your team expertise, available resources, workload capacity and workload capacity. So if the workload exceeds your team's capabilities, you may need to consider alternative strengths such as uh, out, uh, outsourcing, hiring additional staff, or uh, extending project timelines. So this evaluation ensures that your team can deliver high quality work without uh, compromising their well-being. Uh, strategies to use. So what happens if you have more projects or uh, products to make that resources? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, resources. What happens if you have more staff than projects or products to make? These are called gaps and this is why there is a need for capacity planning. So he is discuss discussing important aspect of project and resource management capacity planning 
in the dynamic business environment it is uh, not uncommon to uh, encounter situation where uh, there are either more project to products to make than uh, available resources or uh, conversely more staff than project or products to handle these gaps in capacity can have significant implications for the success of your project or your organizations so therefore it is uh, very essential to develop our strategies to uh, address these gaps when they occur so to begin to begin with let's explore that happens when you have more projects or products to make them available resources uh, this situation can lead to resources concentrating delays and potential uh, bottlenecks in your operations to effectively deal with the gap it is crucial to engage in proactive capacity planning this planning process involves creating a specific uh, uh, plan tailored to each type of uh, gap you encounter chart the future when you're in uh, you implement capacity planning in operations management you are trying to predict the future use project management charts to illustrate what your options are actually filling out these charts will tell you where you are so project management chart can help us predict the future and make informed decisions by accurately filling out these charts uh, we can gain valuable insights into our current positions and determine our options moving forward. So let's dive into it. Uh, capacity planning is the process of estimating is the process of estimating the amount of work that can be accomplished within a given time frame. It involves assessing the available resources analyzing historical data and making projections about future demands by effectively uh, implementing capacity planning we can ensure that our operations run smoothly optimize resource utilization and make informed decisions about uh, taking on new projects and or adjusting our current workload and same time uh, by utilizing the project management chart uh, and accurately filing them out filling them out we can gain a comprehensive understanding of our uh, current operational state we can identify uh, inefficiencies potential uh, bottlenecks and opportunities for improvement these charts provide us with uh, visual representations of our project allowing us to make data driven decisions about capacity planning so anything so far uh Ross, you. can you hear me yeah, yeah i can you. okay uh need for capacity planning uh many businesses uh, underestimate the significance of capacity planning uh but failing to implement it can have serve consequences so uh, staff who put an extra hours to complete a project will need a break before turning the next projects one which will hope fully uh, not drive them to exhaustion so just imagine what can happen if you don't capacity planning so you may need a, a buy equipment you might find yourself with uh, overused equipment or overworked uh, staff. This can result in equipment breakdowns and exhausted employees who desperately uh, need a break. So asking your staff to put in extra hours to complete a project without adequate rest can lead to a decreased morale and a decline in job performance your staff may suffer uh, from law morale this will make them less likely to do a good job so this is not only uh, demotivating 
demotivating but it can also have a negative impact on the overall quality of work uh, further more insufficient capacity planning may force you to buy equipment uh, prematurely if you invest in equipment before you are truly ready it can be wasteful and financially uh, burden burdensome overused equipment is uh, prone to breakdowns resulting in unexpected cost for repair or replacement uh, inadequate planning uh, can lead to shortage of staff uh, during critical project phase if employees become overwhelmed or burnt out due to lack of proper scheduling and workload distributions they may uh, decide to quit uh, moreover uh, consider the consequences of not meeting client expectations if you fail to deliver project of sufficient quality or within the agreed uh, time frame uh, you risk damaging your reputation negative word of mouth can spread quickly uh, potentially leading to the loss of both current and potential clients so this can be significant setback for your business growth and sustainability uh, another aspect of consider is the financial aspect uh, impact without proper capacity planning you may have to uh, redo project or manufacture new products to meet client expectations uh, these unexpected costs were likely not included in your budget for cost putting a strain on your finance and potentially affecting your profitability uh, next one uh, analyzing ways analyze ways of defining and measuring capacity what is capacity uh, volume of production an organization is capable of usually defined according to a given time period the nation of capacity is determined by many factors for example size of labor force equipment products productions etc so capacity is defined under three categories design capacity effective capacity and actual capacity so the operations utilization of resources and the efficiency of its process can be calculated uh, using these uh, design capacity represent the maximum output and organizations can achieve under uh, ideal conditions it assumes that all resources are available and functioning at their full potential uh, design capacity provide a benchmark for evaluating the overall capabilities of an organization or any organization. Uh, then uh, it comes to effective uh, capacity. Effective capacity, uh, on the other hand, takes into account factors that may affect production, such as scheduled downtime, for maintenance employee breaks and other planned interruptions it reflect the realistic capacity that can organization can achieve considering these limitations effective capacity is a more practical measure of what can be accomplished so uh, the last one is uh, actual capacity is the production volume that an organization achieves in reality it considered both planned and unplanned downtown downtime such as equipment breakdown supply chain disruptions or unexpected event that impact productivity uh, for example fire at your workplace uh, actual capacity provides insight into the organization performance and highlights any gap between the designed and achieved capacity level design uh, design this is design capacity uh, refers to the maximum output that uh, an operations can achieve under ideal conditions without any interruptions such as shift changes maintenance or other delays 
it represents the highest level of production that the process is capable of achieving consistently uh, and continuously. Unlike the uh, actual delay, uh, daily production, which consider real world fact factors such as break, maintenance activities, and other operational uh, limitations. Uh, design capacity focus on what the process can achieve in a, a perfect scenario. Uh, it is important to note that design capacity is a theoretical number and not one that is uh, practically applied on a daily basis. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Uh, no, it's clear. Okay, fast. Okay, okay. Next one is effective capacity. Effective capacity refers to how an uh, operation will function over an extended period, taking into account staffing, maintenance, and plant stoppages within the normal working time frame. Uh, it is also commonly referred to as available capacity. To better understand effective capacity, uh, let's consider as an example, uh, let's say if you are managing a manufacturing plant that produces uh, uh, wedges, you have a team of workers, machinery, and uh, various operational factors that impact production's effective capacity takes into account all these elements to determine the optimal output of your system. Uh, during shift change overs, for instance, there is brief period when one group of workers finishes their shift and another group takes over. So this trans transition time is necessary to ensure a smooth handover, but it also means that production is uh, uh, temporary halted similarly lunch breaks allows employees to rest and uh, recharge but they also result in a pause in production so by accounting for these stoppages we can actually assess the available capacity of the operations now uh, actual capacity uh, Actual capacity refers to the total amount of work that a uh, system or operation can handle considering both planned and unplanned losses. Planned losses are expected and inten intentional factors that may reduce output, such as maintenance activities or scheduled breaks. Uh, on the other hand, unplanned losses are unforeseen events or circumstances that can hinder productivity, including poor work rate, of sentencism or the need for new staff training. Measuring capacity. Uh, when we measuring the input is uh, straightforward. We can use it as uh, our unit of measures. For instance, if uh, we have a clear understanding of the amount of raw materials, labors or equipment required, we can use those as uh, our input or major capacity. Uh, there are situations where measures the input can be more complex. For instance, in a process layout where machine are, machines are utilized, it might be uh, difficult to measure the exact machine hour. In such cases, it is more suitable to focus on the output. Instead, we can measure the uh, output of the process and use that as our unit of measures. Uh, then unit of time. Uh, the time scale we choose should be aligned within the operations needs. It could be uh, minutes and hours a day uh, or even a week. The important thing is that the unit of output and the chosen time scale must be consistent with each other. 
This consistency ensures that our measurement accurately represents the operations capacity. Uh, output measure of capacity. When we talk about output measure of capacity, uh, we are essentially looking at the member of finished go units that are produced by uh, a process within a specific time frame. For example, we might consider how many mobile phones are produced in a day or how many cars are manufactured per week. These numbers give us a clear picture of the productivity and efficiency of the operation. Output measures of capacity work best in situations where there is a low variety in the product mix or limit customization. In other words, when the uh, products being produced are similar or standardized, it becomes easier to count and measure the output. Uh, if, if, for example, if a factory is primarily producing a single model of mobile phone, it is straightforward to keep track of the number of units produced. Here, another example, the measure of output capacity could be cars per shift or tons per hours or customers per day. However, the capacity of a, a surgeon or a university professor may not be measured in this manner. In these cases, uh, capacity could be shown in the form of working hours per week. A simple formula of capacity can be uh, capacity is equal to time available divided by time of task. Uh, for example, a service provider works an eight hours day, takes two 15 minutes coffee breaks and has a half hour lunch break. The time available for work in seven hours per uh, worker per day. So uh, consider this worker as a uh, uh, in 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 uh, if have a imagine we have a you know service provider who follows a regular eight hours work day with uh, two or fifteen minutes breaks and half hour lunch break. Uh, this means the worker has seven hours available for actual work day. But let's consider this worker as a fitness instructor. When dealing with each customer, the instructor spend total of seventy minutes. So this time includes 10 minutes for consultations and booking as well uh, as one hour for the gym session itself. So to calculate the number of client the instructor can accommodate in a five day week, we need to determine how many clients they can handle in one day and then multiply uh, that by the number of working days. Uh, since the workers has seven hours available for work each day, we need to convert this to minutes by multiplying it by 60 minutes per uh, hour. So seven hours day multiplied by 60 uh, minutes is equal to 420 minutes a day. 30 clients per can be expected as the capacity of the fitness operations. Uh, here, the simplified, this is a simplified measure as it is presumed that the fitness instructor does not have time off, sick or do any other activities such as maintain the gym equipment or diversify into other areas such as taking classes. Uh, most process will not have just one activity, many will have uh, interlinking processes with different capacity constraint, uh, constraints on each. Uh, here the operational, you know, this diagram illustrates that the output of process is limited by uh, the slow point, which is referred to use as a bottleneck in the process. Here. So, Next one is evaluate uh, the uh, factors of consider when deciding whether the operation in house to uh, 
outsource a uh, decision to outsource or self perform work in typically made by the project team uh, they assess various factor or determine the uh, most suitable approach for the project one of the primary consideration is the budget uh, here we'll uh, talk about together uh, first of one of the primary consideration is the budget it, it is uh, crucial to evaluate whether uh, outsourcing a self-performing the work aligns uh, with the available financial sources and second one is uh, uh, project schedule plays a vital role in decision making process project teams need to evaluate whether outsourcing or self-performing will help meet the project deadline uh, efficient efficiently timeline is often a, a critical factor in project uh, success uh, next one is risk is another and big factor uh, both outsourcing and self-performing uh, carry their own set of risks the project team needs to assess the risk associated with each option and choose the one that minimizes potential neg uh, negative impact on the project uh, to quality quality is uh, another factor to be considered the project team must evaluate whether outsourcing or uh, whether outs outsourcing or self-performing uh, will ensure the uh, desired level of quality for the work uh, being performed maintaining high standard is essential for meeting project objectives and last is uh, flexibility is consideration that should not be overlooked the project team need to assess the level of flexibility required for the work outsourcing may provide a greater flexibility in terms of resource allocation while self-performing may offer more control and uh, adaptability within the team uh, outsourcing decisions uh all the outsourcing decisions in the uh, context of a design company tasked with building a large training uh curriculum for a company in downtown new york so in this scenario the design company has the option to contract out certain aspect of the project such as editing and graphic art work to specialized companies uh, these external companies have the expertise to deliver uh, these services quickly and a lower cost than if the design company were to handle them uh, internally so now when it comes to outsourcing uh, decisions they can be quite challenging the project manager must decide whether uh, to outsource this part of the project or external companies or to develop the necessary capabilities within their own organization uh, outsourcing has its advantages by relying on external experts the design company can save both time and money these specialized companies already uh, possess the required technological expertise which means they can uh, complete the work more uh, efficiently and cost effectively uh, but another hand uh, choosing to self-perform the work has its benefits too if the project team takes on the editing and graphic art work themselves they can uh, develop valuable exp expertise in these areas so this required expertise would not only benefit their parent company but also lead to cost saving on future projects additionally by keeping the work in house the project management team has greater control over the entire process uh, as it is performed by a member of their own team rather than external parties uh, can you see my screen for us and yeah okay outstanding versus self-performing a uh, project manager made a decision to outsource a specific portion of the work that 
uh, required new methods and uh, materials. Uh, the rationale behind this decision was that the project team design uh, carefully evaluated the work and determined that it would be more beneficial for parent uh, <clears throat> uh, parent company to develop this new capacity within the organization. Uh, it become uh, further anal analysis says it become evident that developing the uh, capacity internally would incur additional cost and risk. The expenses associated with developing the necessary skills and resources along with the risk of implementing a new method using existing resources outweighed the potential benefit for the organization. Uh, on the other hand, the parent company process, processed core expertise in the fundamental instructional design activities and the project team had access to qualified resources capable of performing uh, this performing this work so therefore the decision to self perform this specific portion of the project was straightforward uh, by using the existing resources the company enjoyed advantages in terms of cost and schedule uh, this means that it was more uh, economical and efficient to handle this part of the project uh, internally rather than outstanding it to external parties. We take away from, for example, uh, the factors that influence uh, procurement are primarily cost and schedule, but also include risk, quality and flexibility. Uh, to determine whether to outsource or do the work within the organization, consider uh, which option is less costly and which options can deliver the work on time. Uh, describe the steps uh, that are used to resolve uh, constraint issues. Uh, what are concentrates, con uh, constraints? what are what exactly are constraints well uh, constraint refers to uh, limitations or restrictions that can hinder or prevent certain things from happening uh, in project management we commonly deal with uh, six constraints which can help us better manage uh, our products so there are also three main constraints or uh, the triple constraint of project management so Three main uh, constraints. First one is time constraint. Time is uh, often considered the most critical uh, constraint. It involves setting uh, realistic project timelines and milestone closely monitoring progress and ensuring timely completion. Uh, project managers must manage time effectively by prioritizing tasks, managing dependencies and addressing any delays promptly. Second one is scope. Scope refers to the specific objectives, uh, deliverables, and tasks that defines the project boundaries. It is essential to clearly define the scope at the beginning and manage changes effectively. Uh, expanding the scope any may, uh, expanding the scope may require more time and resources, while narrowing it down could lead to quicker completion and reduced costs. Uh, the last one is cost. Cost, this involves a, the financial aspect of a project. It relates to the budget allocated for the project and the resources required to complete it. Uh, to manage cost constraints effectively, project managers must carefully estimate and monitor expenses, ensuring they stay within the uh, predetermined pre budget. Capacity uh, constraints. In simple terms, a capacity constraint refers to resources within a process or operations that cannot increase its productivity as much as other part of the system. Uh, 
in manufacturing line let's say uh, manufacturing line with the several machine working in sequences while most machine can process a certain member of unit per hour uh, there might be one machine that lags behind unable to keep up with the same pace this machine we call the under uh, producing machine become a bottleneck in the process the capacity of the entire facility is limited by the output of this machine so if we can increase the capacity of this underperforming machine we can also enhance the overall capacity of the entire operations so this is because uh, the operations will always go at the pace of the uh, slowest part just like a group of walkers will move at the speed of the slowest person uh, to improve the overall capacity uh, it is crucial to identify the restrictive part of the process the machine or resource that hampers productivity by adding additional resources or finding ways to increase the efficiency of the particular machine. Uh, we can boost its capacity and subsequently improve the overall capacity of the operation. A uh, resource mix that can be potentially cons uh, constraining to an operation could include. So it's talking about various factors that can potentially uh, restrict or limit the smooth operations of a business. Uh, these factors known or as resource constraints can have a significant impact on the efficiency and capacity of an organization. Uh, there are two important resources concentrate staff skills level and IT facilities or technology. Uh, first, uh, let's consider staff level. The availability and proficiency of employees can play a, a crucial role in uh, determining the success of an operation. Staff members can be trained to enhance their skills and become more versatile in contribution to contributing to different aspects of business process. They can gain ex experience they often become more efficient and quicker at their job uh, next one is it facilities or technology this can be a small or very significant important improvement uh, to a process uh, the implementation of suitable information and communication technology can uh, revolutionize a process either in small or significant ways Investing in the uh, right technology tool, technological tools can reduce process time, enhance accuracy, and even transform the nature of the process itself. Uh, let's take online banking as a talk as an example. Uh, by introducing online banking services, financial institutions have greatly improved efficiency and increased their uh, capacity to serve customers uh, now uh, we'll uh, talk about two important factors material availability and product or service uh, mix material availability uh, supply of raw material plays a uh, important role in determining the capacity potential of an operation if there is a, a restriction or shortage in the availability of material it can limit the capacity of the uh, operations uh, when this restriction is resolved and the materials become uh, ready uh, readily available it can significantly improve the capacity uh, next one is a uh, product or service mix uh, when a, fac a facility produce multiple products or offers various services the capacity of the operations can be influenced by the mix of these offering different products or services may requires uh, varying uh, quantities of resources per unit so for example 
uh, consider uh, restaurants that serve both burgers and pizza. Uh, the pro process of preparing a burger may require fewer resources compared to making a pizza. Also, if the uh, demand for pizza suddenly increases and the restaurants needs to allocate more resources to pizza production, it may result in a decrease in burger productions. Uh, shortage a key to boosting capacity this can affect the capacity of an operation if there is a resources constraint that is affected by timing in the process uh, by but however by implementing proper sh uh, storage mechanisms such as holding work in progress or finished goods we can enhance the operation capacity in the short term uh, how does this work uh, the ability to store products allows us to mitigate swings and fluctuations in demand instead of being overwhelmed during peak periods or slow down during low demand periods so we can regulate the flow of goods this ensures that the operations can operate at its full uh, potential regardless of the changing uh, demands uh, scheduling maximize availability apart from shortage uh, storage working schedule and access to facilities also play a, a vital role in determining the availability of uh, capacity uh, let's consider an example of uh, uh, lecture theater with the with with the capacity of 100 students so now imagine if this facility were to operate beyond standard working hours allowing for lecture as early and as 6 a.m so while this extended schedule might increase the availability uh, of the lecture theater it could pose challenges uh, for both staff and students so waking up early for a 6 p.m lecture might not be ideal for everyone therefore scheduling must strike a balance between maximizing capacity and considering the uh, practically and preferences of those involved in short term a cafe can adopt strategies to immediately address increased demand for instance, play, uh, placing a few additional tables outside or extending the working hours of the staff can help accommodate the extra customers. Uh, these quick adjustments can provide some relief without requiring extensive planning or resources. Uh, moving on to the medium term, the cafe owners will have more options available to future increase capacity this could involve hiring more staff or uh, introducing additional cooking facilities in the kitchen this step would help the cafe handle greater influx of customers and serve them uh, eff 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 efficiently a theory of constraint uh, this theory uh, proposed by uh, Goldratt 1986 in 1986 is a practical approach to problem solving and improving organizational uh, performance. A uh, theory of constraint or TOC suggests that uh, every system must have at least one constraint which limits its availability to generate output identifying and managing these constraints is crucial for achieving the organization's ultimate goal which is profit uh, in many systems there is an unequal flow of works within different work centers the theory emphasizes that constraint or bottleneck should be the uh, focal point for management rather than maximizing all resources within the process we prioritize managing the bottleneck to optimize overall performance uh, 
Goldratt introduced the concept of uh, jump buffer rope to guide our, our actions. The bottleneck or constraint is represented by the uh, drum. It sets the pace for the entire process because its capacity is limited. Consequently, the bottleneck should always be working to the uh, fullest extent possible. Uh, Goldratt's five focusing steps. Uh, there are five focusing steps which provide a process for fearing, uh, fr freeing a system from bottleneck and improving its overall performance. Uh, these steps help us identify and address constraints that uh, slow down the system. So uh, step one is identify we, the system's constraints explore exploit the system constraints subordinate everything else to the above decisions evaluate uh, the system uh, constraints identify the next constraint and number five it is previous step or constraint has been removed go back to step one but do not allow uh, or in a in a to become the system uh, constraints uh, Goldratt uh, advised that any constraint having been identified is only uh, transitional as this constraint is exploited, another will appear in its place without identifying the role or uh, the real constraints. Goldratt suggests that management may not be able to uh, find the uh, real cause that restrict capacity as well take actions to work around the problem rather than solve the real cause uh, that's it and then references and uh, this is uh, it for today now and hopefully i'll see you next week uh, any question for us anything else no thank you very much uh, you have I hope you have submitted your uh, first assignment yeah, yeah, I've done it already and I got the uh, class uh, information. All right, okay. If you have any question or anything else, please drop an email at yasir at uh, ukversity.co.uk. Sure, sure. And, uh, okay. Thank you very much for today and have a nice evening. And uh, Thank you. See you next week. Uh, yeah. Bye. Good evening. Bye. Bye.